as I was scouring the earth to find the next most eligible phenom of a human being to be on the show after Miss Columbia, I could think and did think, and there is no one better, arguably, in the universe to be on this show today than the one and only Janisa, who has not only the coolest name on this earth, but also the most <laughs> interesting spelling. So for that reason, of which there are another thousand, I am so excited to have her on today. Janisa, how do you do? Good. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to this and looking forward to sharing my story, you know, for everyone out there to get to know me a little bit too. So yes. I'm doing excellent. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, you look excellent. You sound excellent. And uh, viewers you. of the YouTube uh, variant of the show, Janice's light is probably going to turn off and that's cool. <laughs> she's got a motion sensor. So if she periodically pops out to kick it back yes. on. Yes. I'm so okay. sorry about that. <laughs> no, but nobody cares. It's okay because you're amazing and you're going to carry the show on your own because you're so incredible. So with I'm that, <laughs> let's segue and uh, let's weep out of the plane here with our parachutes on, that is to say. I want to start by giving the viewer, listener, audience member uh, some context as to what thematically the show is intended to be today. Today... There are, God only knows, X amount of people in the U.S. that are maybe trapped in a cubicle, not literally, but maybe they're in an accountant position or they're working as a Macy's Mac girl or they're working for someone else. And every single day of their life for the last Y number of days, they've been sensing this pull to become a beautypreneur for lack of a better way of putting it, to where they are in charge of their schedule, their life, they remove the ceiling on earning potential, and for whatever reason, fear shackles them and prevents them from taking the action that they know that if they were to, would lead to, lead to a dramatically improved life and life quality. And Janisa is testament to what can happen when you look fear in the face you give it a proper Mike Tyson uppercut, you smack <laughs> it around. You say nine, no, and you push through it and you create. And so that is what we're going to talk about today is the trials, the tribulations, the hell that Janissa went through facing fear, facing dragons and all the rest of it, metaphorically speaking, to find the treasure that was the creation of Trilux Studio, which is going to be the world's most glam studio in history i'm certain Thank so that's you. what we're gonna unpack today but i'm gonna start in perhaps a peculiar part of your story that i alluded to pre-show because i think there are people in the audience that are thinking well i'm from another country i can there's no way i could possibly pull this off and become a thriving awesome beauty preneur so take us back to the moment you came to the states from albania and by the way, listeners and viewers, I have no idea where the story starts. So she might tell me, yeah, I came here when I was three months old, in which case <laughs> maybe we'll, we'll go a different direction. But please, over to you. Where does your story Actually, start? Actually, so I was born in Albania and um, we moved from Albania to Germany when I was six months old. I grew up in Germany until I was about 10 and then moved to the States with my mom, my sister and my dad. And uh, growing up, this is actually a funny thing. I was a tomboy. See, I never liked makeup. I hate it when my mom used to dress me up. And it is the funniest thing because my mom would always be so surprised because, you know, she raised us very fashionable to love girly stuff. And I hated it. All my friends were boys. I thought I was one of the boys. <laughs> wow. Look at me now. Yeah. Yeah. Look at surprising. you now. Lightning blonde hair. Makeup is on point. Anyway, I digress. Yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so coming to the states you know it was obviously a drastic change you adjust to a new country a new language and everything else is new um but foremost i love it here you know as we all know and everywhere around the world that america is known as the land of opportunities that if you stick to something and you know you want to achieve a goal or you want to go to school for something there's so many possibilities here that other countries don't offer and which is great. And my mom 
raised us as a single parent, which she obviously did an amazing job, as you can tell. <laughs> she raised us, you know, to always follow our dreams, be encouraging, push ourselves to never settle for less than we deserve. And I always admired that. And I always stuck that with me through my journey in life. Um, growing up here was good. I loved it. I had many friends, many, you know, cousins and family that lived here prior to me. I, uh, I decided to take the route into the beauty industry when I started loving makeup. And that goes from being a tomboy, you know, so figure that. <laughs> I started to love it. I started to put more attention to it. Makeup is definitely my baby. It was my first love. It, it It's what got my feet into this industry. And I started to fall in love with it more and more. Most importantly, is making people feel and look beautiful. Everyone is beautiful in their own way. I'm just here to enhance it. I would never say I'm going to make you beautiful. Everyone is beautiful in their own way. Everyone is beautiful in their own skin. You know, you hire me, I enhance you, I enhance your beauty, I make you feel more confident. And that's the job that I love in itself. After doing freelance makeup for a very long time, I decided to expand my knowledge into the skincare industry. And that's just me as a person. I always push myself to learn different things. I never like to get stuck in one place. So after this, I'm sure I'm going to learn other things more. So you probably see me becoming a plastic surgeon at some point. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but I love, I love evolving my brain, my knowledge, learning about there's so there's so much to learn. There's always something to learn. And I love that about life and this industry in itself. Um, I decided to take the route of this and I couldn't be happier. It is exactly who I am. Like it was my calling. And I definitely believe that to be true. Everything that has led me here has led me to my accomplishment. You said my calling. <clears throat> and I think most people struggle with thumbing what it is that they is or are or should be how did you figure that out i'll tell you that i was actually thinking of that um my calling was me you know working in the industry part-time working as a server i grew up serving you know and my mom has owned many restaurants so we grew up in the food industry and i would see how you know, like how tired and draining it is. And I love being a server. I love interacting with people, but it is mentally and physically draining. I remember having this dream for a very long time and one day looking in the mirror and I said to myself, you know, like, what is your goal in life? Like, what do you strive for? I always, ever since I was little, I would tell my mom, you know, one day I'm going to be a famous actress. One day I'm going to do this. One day I'm going to do that. And she's like, all right, well, don't say it, do it, act on it. <laughs> And she would never be like, yeah, you know, you can do anything. She would always tell me, if you have something, you want to do it, act on it. If you don't act on it, it's never going to happen. And that's just kind of been my motto throughout the years. And when I say my calling, it is more of a description of me finding what my inner self was happy with. Like what makes me happy? I could literally sit here in my in my studio all day, do nothing. And I feel happy. That's just how I know that this is my calling. This is what I was meant to do. I feel at ease when I do this job. Hmm. <laughs> you stumbled upon it somewhat, but when you, <clears throat> it, it, it seems like you were, I want to say this, you essentially test drove some cars and you sat in this vehicle and realized, oh my God, it chose you in some sense. And you were authentic to it. You were true to it. And you swam into it, committed to it. Do you have any notes on commitment as it pertains to this? And I def yes, I definitely do. Commitment to me is very important because I've had many obstacles in this journey where I could have just throw my towel up and said, you know what, I'm done. Like, I don't want to do it. It's too much stress. They're asking me for too many paperwork and I can't deal with this in life in itself and having another job and family and everything that, you know, comes into that circle together. But commitment to me was waking up every day and be like, no, this is what I need to do. And I stay true to that. 
And I'm actually very proud of myself because not a lot of people have that. And, you know, I encourage everyone that I love around me, my friends and anyone who describes their dreams to me to have that, that specific outlook in this industry and in any industry that you're in. If you are committed every single day you wake up with that thought, then it, that's your calling. Going back to the calling, that's your calling. You wake up every single day and you have a knot in your stomach and you say, okay, I need to do this. I need to do that. That is what I call, what I consider a calling. How do you, how do you stay committed though through adversity and fire? It's definitely hard. I stayed committed with a positive outlook into the, <clears throat> into defining this into my life. I definitely looked at it positively and said, you know, if I do this, I know I'll be happier. If I do this, I know I'll get personal satisfaction mm. within myself, knowing that I did something for myself. That's for, that for me was the most important part, you know, paperwork and finding a space that is very hard in itself. But to me, I think the motivation you find within yourself is the most important one mm. to not give up on it. Yeah. I'm thinking of Rick Astley's song, Never Going to Give You Up, which <laughs> <Love that song. laughs> has become a toxic meme that haunts my brain every day. Uh, I love wow. that song. Yeah. I'm tempted to sing it, but I won't. I won't. It would it would blow out eardrums. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about these obstacles that you faced. I want to hear with with visceral clarity what maybe the top three obstacles that you faced were and then how you dealt with them. The first obstacle was me sitting down. I remember I was sitting in my dining room. And I had a piece of paper and I was like, okay, I'm going to create a business plan for myself, you know, from point A to point C. And I created it. And I said to myself, I did a lot of research. Now, coming from someone who's never had anyone that I know who's made it in this industry, being an esthetician and opening your own space, it was very hard for me. I had no guidance whatsoever. So everything of mine came from research. I sat there for hours and hours every day, researching and researching paperwork that I needed, what I need to open it. And now going back to that, my studio is part of a corporation called My Salon Suites. Mm. But originally I wanted to open my own space in Boston, but, you know, going through all those optical obstacles and then mm -hmm. life got in its way too with personal stuff I just gave up and I'll be honest I did you know I threw my towel out and I was like you know what I can't it's not meant to be I went to every department I went to I did every paperwork I contacted every person I needed to contact and everyone was turning me down every single person said no they're like I don't like your plan I don't like your business plan I don't believe that you can succeed in this I don't believe that the income you show me that you think you're going to make is actually what you're going to accomplish on your own. So I definitely got the backbone of this in like a very hard case. You know, everyone shut their door to me, every single person. And luckily from a good friend of mine, who's also my hairdresser, she now does the same thing as me. And it's funny. I was in that stages of, you know, getting over personal stuff and depression. And I sat in her chair and she said, Jenny, I have a great, great opportunity. I'm leaving my salon and I want you to come along with me. This is a great way for you to start your business, build your clientele, get your feet in the door so you can actually learn what it's like to have your own business, which in my opinion, I'm kind of glad that it happened the way that it did because I learned more, you know, instead of me grabbing all these loans and going into debt. And it's my first time being in business, no investors, and it would just be me on my own. And it was very hard for me to grasp that. I said, there was a time when I sat and I said, can I do this? Like, what if I take out all these loans and what if I don't succeed? Because that is a thought that everyone has going into business, you know, especially as a first timer and with no guidance whatsoever in this industry. I would ask people to help me, but you know, everyone has their own personal life they have to deal with and. I completely understand. So when my friend presented this opportunity to me, I immediately contacted, I took it as a sign. For me, it happened the way that it did. It was meant to happen that way. 
Mm. Once I contacted this corporation, I contacted the woman who runs the show in Massachusetts. And she instantly said to me, you know, we're opening in May. It's still under construction. Would you like to come see it? And I kid you not, and this is what I mean by calling, I walk into this building and I instantly said, yes. She's like, you haven't seen it yet. I'm like, yes. I'm like, I don't want to hear it. I'm like, just give me the paperwork and I'm signing it. And she's like, but you need to see it. Like you need to actually view it. And when I came here, it was still under construction. And I said, you know what? I don't need to see it. I've been searching high and low for something to feel like me. And everything felt like me in this space. It was, where it was you are weird today. where I am Your today. Space. Yes. Yes. My space. It's a small space, but it's me. It defines me. I'm very intimate with my clients. You know, I make them feel at home. I make them feel very comfortable with any procedure they come with. And I create a bond and relationship with every single one of them, you know, and I like this. I like to build my clientele going from one-on-one -on -one first and then starting off big. That reminds me to ask you, well, I'll ask it now. Is, is there any advice that you would give um, beauty pros, beauty preneurs, estheticians, whatever, on selecting location based on your experience? The only reason I decided to go with this location, as I originally wanted to open it in South Boston, Massachusetts, because there's more foot traffic. The only reason why I chose this is because I used to live in Needham in Massachusetts and I really loved the area and I was very familiar with it. And coming back here was, it kind of felt like home. You know what I mean? I felt very at home when I lived in this neighborhood, even though Watertown and Needham are a few towns away, but very close together. Um, it felt definitely comforting for me, knowing the area, knowing where everything is, you know, all the stores where they are, all the beauty supply stores where they are. And I personally love the building, how it presents itself. It's very high tech. So I definitely would say to someone looking for a space is not to overwhelm yourself as I wanted to do in the beginning. You know, I wanted to get my own place and I wanted to do this and I wanted to do that. So I'm glad that I started small to make it big instead of big and then possibly crash. Okay, let's unpack that. So you, you were very intentional, I assume, about the, the choice of word or the word choice of overwhelm. So maybe the theme, a guiding principle for new estheticians, cosmetologists, whatever, massage therapists and the like, is to, in, in, uh, in the name of avoiding becoming overwhelmed, where you can very easily become susceptible to becoming top heavy, where you can fall over and fall flat in your face, is to sm uh, start small with everything with maybe the services that you're offering, with the location size that you're in, instead of trying to exactly. flat off more than you can chew, which will then lead to, uh, i trying to think of a way to rhyme here. I'm coming up empty-handed. Uh, start small is the point. And that, that's applicable everywhere from the sounds of it. I mean, is that accurate in your experience? In my experience, yes, only because... Um... I had no investors, but for people who do and invest into their company, I think that's great. You know, if you want to start off big, you can make it on your own. You have, a, you kind of have like a backbone always there, which are your investors to help you financially, to help you with paperwork because you're doing it together. For me personally, I did everything myself. So for me, it was harder and I didn't want to bite off more than I could chew, as you said. I didn't want to overwhelm myself. I didn't want to go into debt as much. So I decided to go this route because I figured, you know, I somehow know and I can feel judging by the choices that I've made so far and the success I've had in this industry for, the, for this many years and the people that I've known, I'm very confident in myself knowing that I can grow a business. Oh, there, there, there's the light. <laughs> I'm going to come right back. I'm going to pause okay, the back. Okay, fair enough. <clears throat> okay, fair great. Enough, I'm enough, so sorry. Enough. This is just how it is here. And, you know, we have to kind of just deal with it. But um, going back to that, I didn't 
because I did it all by myself, I didn't want to overwhelm myself. And that was my biggest thing. Going into business, I wanted to take everything slow and everything patiently. Mm. Even now, you know, I still take my time. I don't book as many clients a day. I want to take that one-on-one very personable with my clients to create a relationship. Because to me, word of mouth is way more important than advertisement. You know, I can see an advertisement like this all day long. But if I don't hear it from a friend of mine and how well it works and the success that they've had, how am I going to believe it? You know, if I have you, for example, coming to me and saying, oh, my God, Jenny, you know, I tried this new, new, new service that you're offering, CryoSkin, and I see amazing results. Thank you for helping me, you know, and thank you for making me feel more confident in my skin. And as happy as I am to hear that, it also makes me very happy knowing that my work speaks for itself. I don't have to go above and beyond. I can, I'm confident enough to know that my services will go beyond that. You know, go visit Jenny. She's great. She's friendly. She's very down to earth. And down to earth for me is the most important part. I don't, I want everyone to feel comfortable when they come in here, you know, like you're seeing a friend. That's how I like to build my relationships. And I've been very, very, very hard on myself with that because I, constantly try to make every single person that walks into this door as confident as possible being in here and making not making them uncomfortable with any situation that presents itself there's always a fix to everything that's my motto in life you can fix anything if you want <laughs> this is true this is true hmm. as you were going through this uh journey of starting the business were there many resources out there that gave you guidance on how to start a beauty business in particular no none none and looking back now you know you read it online and you hear about all these people who have made it but i truly believe that if you don't step on it on yourself like there are still things that i'm learning and i'm like oh i wish i did that you know opening my business and i didn't So there's definitely, there's guidance out there to help you open your business, but don't forget that you're not just opening a business, you're opening your own, like your personality is in this business, what you present, it's you, the services you offer, the way you treat people, the the income you bring in, your, your steps of achievement you want till the end. That to me was the hardest part to learn, to be myself in my space because I think that's what grows your business more you know creating relationships with people yeah totally agree do you have a um a favorite defining failure so far on this journey that you've had to get to where you are today the favorite defining failure I have a few. <laughs> Hit me. Talk to me. Well, one of them was definitely, you know, coming in here thinking I knew exactly what I wanted to do, exactly how I wanted to do everything. And I failed completely. You know, I had to redo everything in here. And I was like, no, this is not me. And I would put something somewhere. No, this is not me either. And I would take it off, throw it away, waste money here and there, trying to find the balance between what I like and what I don't like, what looks good, what doesn't look good. And I went that I took that very hard because I would come in here and I would buy thousands of dollars worth of merchandise, you know, for the studio. And I'm like, I don't like this or I don't like the way it performs. I don't like the service and I can't. I'm my own advocate. So I try everything on myself first before I try it on anyone else. And, and I'm like, no, you know, this is not me. I don't want this to represent my business. And I would get mad and I would just drive home, you know, and be like, why am I doing this? And there was definitely times where I'm like, you know what, it would be so easy to give up right now and just call it quits. But then that's not who I am. So I always come back. I find a way to come back and I'm like, all right, I'll give myself an hour. I'll come back. I'll fix it. Or if a client is unhappy now, we all know being in business, you are never going to satisfy hundred percent of your clients. That's impossible. There's always going to be someone who doesn't like you 
always going to be someone who's like, oh, you know, I like her service. I don't like her personality or I like her personality, but her service sucked. And that's fine with me. I take criticism very well. To me, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't phase me at all. If I have one person who, you know, reviews me and says, oh, she was the worst and I hated everything about it. That's fine. Thank you. You know, you're teaching me something. I can fix that, you know, for the next person. So criticism for me is I learn from it. I take from it. I never get offended by it. And that's one thing that I actually love about myself. I've been like that forever. <laughs> I think you should always ask <clears throat> for a slap in the face mm -hmm. and not praise. Because praise is useless. Whereas criticism can be constructive, at least in my experience. Is there any advice you would give people in the audience that are looking to start their own beauty business? Oh my God, yes. No matter what you go through in life, any obstacles that come your way, and trust me, I've had my fair share of them too, that have knocked me flat on my face where I didn't even get out of bed for days. But I push through it because at the end of the day, you know, you have your immediate family, you have your partners, you have kids and you have all of this, but who are you really true to? And at the end of the day, if you're not happy, it is impossible to make someone else happy. And I personally agree to that a hundred percent because, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, everything was rainbows and butterflies and I decided to open it and everything just went smoothly. It didn't. There was a lot of days where I left this place open and I didn't even come in because I couldn't get out of bed. And that's just things that people go through in life. You know, everyone goes through these, you know, downfalls and they come right back up. But I do believe that self-love is what helped me get through everything. You know, if one person turned their door on me and said, you know what, I don't like your business um, proposal and I'm not going to give you the lease. Yeah, I would get upset. Absolutely. I would sit in my car and sometimes I would cry and I say, why am I doing all of this? You know, I go through hours of research and paperwork and people just slam the door right in my face like it's nothing. And I definitely felt very discouraged and I felt very unappreciated for the, all the work that I at least put in, you know, at least look at my plan, at least talk to me, get to know me, what my plans are, what my ideas are. But I do believe, and, you know, I'm, I'm not speaking on behalf of everyone. This is just my belief that everything happens for a reason. If I didn't have those doors slammed, I wouldn't be here today. So I'm kind of glad that those doors slammed in my face. I'm not going to lie. Looking back now, I'm like, I laugh and I say, Thank God that they slammed in my face because now I'm happy. Maybe I wouldn't have been happy, you know, taking out all these loans and thinking every single day, like, how am I going to pay this? And what am I going to do? What if my business doesn't pick up? And people have closed their business, you know, and by research, it gives you a six month dilemma. You give your, yourself six months in six months. If you don't make it after six months, you're most likely not going to make it. And that's just by research. And I'm striving to push through those six months. <laughs> those six months are going to happen for me no matter what. <laughs> no, I'm joking. You but, um, make it. You've got, you've got winter written all over you. You are going to make it. I definitely have the confidence. And that's something I had to learn to build. You know, mm -hmm. it was very hard growing up with a single mom, working all the time, seven days a week. It was hard. You know, you don't just grow up with confidence. You have to push yourself to be like that. So my best advice for people who want to, who are in this industry and are looking to open their own space and, you know, follow their dreams, it's all in the confidence you have. You can walk into a room and you could be like, you know, here's my business proposal. This is what I'm going to do. And it's all in your attitude. It's all how you present yourself. If you present yourself with confidence, everyone will listen to you. So if you find that inner goddess, as you might say, <laughs> anything is possible. <laughs> well, that's a great segue to the close of the show with 
two final questions here. So here's the first of two. You get a call from NBC, the network, and it's February 2023. And they're going to give you the big premiere spot on the Jumbotron at the Super Bowl. And on that Jumbotron, the center of the stadium's field, is your message to beauty professionals and aspiring beauty entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. What does the Jumbotron say? And if it's helpful, you can use a quote from someone else that's been inspiring. No, I never find quotes in other people. I always find quotes within myself because I've been through it all. And I always, always say, like I told you before, it's all in your confidence. If you believe that you can do it, you can do it. There's no one in this earth that can stop you from your goals. Anything is possible. And I say that from experience, not just with my business, with everything in life. You can literally do anything if you put your mind to it. It all starts with that little thought in your brain in the morning and that little thought, you know, before you go to bed, if it's still there, that's your destiny. That's who you're meant to be. That's what I believe. And that's definitely what I would say to how many people attend that stage. <laughs> well, that's a fantastic and beautiful way to end the show. So before I let you go, where can the audience connect with you if they want to find you? chats or come in for a treatment so, what's the best i am guys? located i'm located at 150 arsenal street in watertown massachusetts um it's called my salon suites my suite number is 115 but my instagram is where i have most of my um you know clients contact me i am also on bagaro as trilux studio i also have my own website um but I think Instagram is where I connect with people. They send me messages of treatments like, oh, you offer this. Can I come in or advice? And I am, I'm always on it. You know, I'm always, always on it. So please don't hesitate. You can literally ask me anything you want and I will answer. I answer to everyone and I'm actually very good at that. It could be five o'clock in the morning. And if I hear my phone, I'm answering it. <laughs> and, and what is your, what is your handle? Uh, your IG handle, Janisa? It is at trilux.studio. Okay. Well, I will include that in the description of the show so people can find you and we'll hang our hats there for today. Thanks for being on. I appreciate you making the time. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Take care.